Never Stop Learning Week 250, we're going to take a quick look at the Paint Bucket tool in Adobe Photoshop CC 2015. Alright, so to activate this tool, just hold down the Shift key and hit the G key a couple times until you see that Paint Bucket next to your cursor. Now let's break this down a little bit. Now the only reason you see that Paint Bucket icon is to let you know that the Paint Bucket tool is activated. The important part is the tip of that arrow. That's what's actually controlling the Paint Bucket tool. All right, so how does this guy work? Well, if you look at the bottom of the tools panel, you'll see that I have a black foreground. Because we have this tool set to foreground, we're gonna change whatever pixels I click on to my foreground color. I'll show you what I mean. All right, so over here in this white area, I'm gonna click once, and it's gonna fill that area in with my foreground color. All right, so I'm gonna undo that. Now let's zoom in on this logo a little bit, and we have this white ring right in here. I'm gonna use the tip of my arrow click on those white pixels, and now that white ring is filled with my foreground color. All right, so I'm gonna do that. That's pretty much how this guy works, but let's take a look over here at the top. Now, starting on the left, this is where you can manage your presets. Once you get this tool working exactly how you want, you wanna click on this icon over here on the right, and that's gonna allow you to create a new tool preset. That way, you'll be able to use that same paint bucket tool again and again. All right, to the right of that, Currently it says foreground, but if you click on this drop down menu, you can switch over to pattern. All right, so I'm gonna activate that, and then we get this little preview of my activated pattern. Now, if I click on this guy on the side, it's gonna give me the drop down menu. Now we have some patterns loaded in here. You could also click on this gear wheel to load some new ones or create some new ones. Now I'm gonna stick with this guy here. When I hover over it, it tells me it's called extra heavy canvas. All right, so let's tuck this guy away. Now let's see what happens if I click on these white pixels again. All right, so it's gonna fill in that area with my chosen pattern. All right, so I'm gonna undo that, Command-Z. Back over here, I'm gonna switch this over to foreground once again, and now let's take a look at mode. It's talking about the blending mode, so if you click on the drop-down menu, you have access to all these different blending modes to work with your paint bucket. Now, over here, this section, this is gonna be for your shadows, if you wanna create like a shadow effect. If you wanna work with a highlight or lighting effect, you wanna work with this group in here. And for a more contrast effect, you wanna go with this group in here. All right, so that's just a, a down and dirty breakdown of that. All right, to the right of that, we have opacity. By default, it's set to 100%. So that means when I click on an area, it's gonna use 100% opacity of my foreground color. All right, so let's undo that. Now, if we back off on this, uh, I can use a scrubby slider, just click and drag towards the left. All right, now when I click, it's gonna look like a light gray, but it's actually just 19% opacity of black. And the cool thing is, is every time you click on it, you can continue to build uh, that color up. All right, so I'm gonna go back a couple steps. So I'm gonna hold down Command Option Z. Every time I hit that, I'm able to go back more than one step. All right, on a PC, it would be Control Alt Z. All right, but you only have a couple of undos, so keep that in mind. All right, I'm gonna bring this opacity back to 100%. Now let's talk about the keyboard shortcuts. Uh, really quick, we have some keyboard shortcuts for your mode and opacity. So for the blending mode, if you hold down Option Shift and then use the plus or minus keys, you could cycle through your different blending modes. All right, so on a PC, it would be Alt, Shift, plus or minus. And then uh, if you know some of the keyboard shortcuts for specific blending modes, you could use those as well, like Option, Shift, M for multiply or Option, Shift, N for normal. All right, the opacity keyboard shortcut, uh, basically, while you have this tool activated, if you hit any number, like number 5, it'll drop it down to 50%. Uh, but if you want like 33%, then just hit 33. To bring it back to 100%, just hit 0. All right, now we have Tolerance. By default, it's set to 32. So let's see what that means. I'm going to switch over to this other document. Here I have a gradient. It's showing us different levels of some colors. So we start off with white in the center and it's gonna go off to black towards the edges, all right? So let's see what happens if I click right here, right around the white area. I'm gonna click once, and it's gonna fill in this area with my foreground color, all right? Because we have a low color range, the circle's kinda of small. So I'm gonna undo that. I'm gonna increase this tolerance. Let's go over 100, yeah, somewhere around here is good. All right, so I'm gonna click roughly in the same area, and now we have a much larger circle because we have a higher tolerance we're affecting a larger color range. All right, so I'm gonna do that. Let's bring this tolerance lower than it was uh, previously, down over here. I'll click in the center, and now we have a much smaller circle. All right, so I'll undo that. 
Now let's take a look at this feature over here. This says uh, smooth edge transition. It used to be called anti-alias. You can see that it's activated already because it has this darker color activated. So I'm going to click on it and let's zoom in on this edge here. All right, so it's going to try to smooth out this edge. It might not look that smooth, but check this out. When I undo this and turn this feature off, I'm going to click roughly in the same area, zoom in, and now we have more of a stair stepping going on here. So depending on your workflow and your output, you might want to have this feature turned on or off. I'm going to leave this guy turned on for now. And the next feature that we have, this one is going to fill only contiguous pixels. So let's jump over to this other document and see what we're talking about. You kind of got an idea about this earlier, but let's do it one more time. Back over here in the swatches panel, I'm going to switch over to this blue color. All right, I'm taking a look at this white background. I'm going to click once and it's going to fill in the background with blue. Notice we have some white rings over here and some white over here in this icon, but uh, those are not affected. So I'm going to undo that. Let's turn this feature off. All right, I'm going to click on the white background. And now what it's doing is it's trying to find all the white pixels in the document using a tolerance of 51. And it's going to convert those pixels to my foreground color. All right, so let's undo that. I'll leave this guy turned on. Now the last feature we have over here on the right, this one is going to fill composite image. So if I turn it on, we're going to be targeting multiple layers. Well, all the layers in the document. All right, so when I have this feature turned off, I'm targeting a single layer. And you'll be able to see that over here in the layers panel. Whichever one is highlighted is going to be the one that's affected. All right, so feel free to play around with all these settings. Because remember, you could always come over here to the upper left, right click on this icon, and reset your tools. So that's going to bring your uh, paint bucket back to how it was by default. And there you have it, folks. That's a quick look at the paint bucket tool in Adobe Photoshop CC 2015.